reform, to live transformed. And this is already the tenth message that I'm going to bring to you. And um, man, am I excited about this one also. Uh, I think it, 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 it fits also well in with what we've heard this morning. So God knows what He's doing. And um, so we are still busy with our slogan. Oh, I just have to put this on first. We were, we were formed, but got deformed. Can you still remember how did we get deformed? There's two ways that we were deformed. How? Sin and the church. Sin and the church. Religion. Not per se church, religion. Religion has deformed us, has made us something that we are not. Because religion kept telling us that we are sinners, but we are not. We are saved by the blood. We have been justified. Do you know what the word justification means? It means just as if you have never ever sinned before. Amen. Yes, amen. That's how you are. So we were deformed. Now we need to be reformed in order to live. Transform. All right, we have said to each other, I'm going to repeat it again. God's plan and purpose has never changed. It's always doing three things in the earth. One is establishing His kingdom. Two is building His temple, which is the corporate temple. And three is restoring the image of His Son. So what we've seen so far is that Reformation is the qualification of the Ecclesia to punish disobedience by leading every thought captive. Reformation is spiritual alignment with the order of God, namely Father, Son. Reformation is the installation of the proceeding word of God in us. It is alignment with the higher life. It's discovering your measure, the measure of Christ in you. And the last message that we brought, that I brought is, is having the mind of Christ. That's what Reformation means. Or in terms. And we said to each other that the mind of Christ is not something that we need to try to obtain, it's something that we already have. Paul wrote to say, you have the mind of Christ. He doesn't tell us that we must get the mind of Christ. He says, you have the mind of Christ. So now we need to develop it. So what we need to understand, this is what I want to start with, building a foundation before I'm really going to jump into the Word. In order to develop the mind of Christ, there's certain challenges that we will have to face. There's certain challenges that you are going to face. And the first one is, you have to forget and you have to undo all the things that you were taught in the previous season. You cannot sit in reformation Thinking so like the old way. Yeah. Like the religious way. Oh no, my brothers and sisters. Geliefdes in the Lord Jesus Christ. Ons is net sondags. Maar oh, dank die Jere. Ek is een gerede sondag. When it doesn't immediately 
produce results. Uh -huh. Do not revert back to your old practices. Ja. Amen. Ja. Kan ek op Afrikaans kom vir dit? Dit beteken, as jy nie daarin sien iets gebeur, dit beteken nie niks gebeur. Ja. Because sometimes we see and we think nothing is happening and then we think, but when I was at my previous season, when I was there, things happened. Now I want to go back there because here it doesn't seem like things is happening as the way it's supposed to happen. When things does not result, brings result immediately, don't revert back. Please just say, Peter is this, not terug in the morning. Stay on the water with God. Walk into a higher life. Walk into a higher dimension with Him. And let His focus be your focus. So, so I know that some people will listen to this and then they will think about it and they will kick it under the bed. And luckily they will be here tonight. They may be the ones that listen on Facebook, but I don't believe that either. So they are the ones that are not here, not listening. If they hear this, they will just listen. Kick it under the bed, like most people usually do after a Sunday service. Because usually we can just come to church to have a nice service. And when the sermon is over, we go back home and we say, yes, that was good. Kick it under the bed. Now we wait for the next one and don't do anything about the one that we just heard. Come on. Let me ask you the question. From this morning, until now, how many of you start to practice this morning service? So all that you did is get to get out of the bed. Come on. And I'm just making an example of one sermon. How many times do we really stop immediately after we hear the word of God? The word of God has been implanted into us. How many of us really that same day start to implement that word because it's a word from God that was implanted here. It was just not the word that I want to hear. It's a word that has been implanted here. This morning after the church service, there was someone, unfortunately they're not here tonight, there was someone that immediately implemented this word. Because there was someone that while we were trying to get out, they were coming in and they had a bag in their hands and in the bag they put all of their depression pills and they put all of their cigarettes and they said, I'm not a slave of this anymore. I belong to God. I'm finished with the cigarettes. I'm finished with this. They have implemented the word that God has given them. After service. And I'm going to get out and we throw it away. So that we make sure it's gone. Yes. So that's why I'm asking the question. How many of you have started to implement this morning, sir? Now we're already at the evening. Now we're going to hear another word. So when are we going to implement the first word if we haven't? Or when are we going to implement the second word if we haven't started to implement the first word yet? Mm -hmm. And that's what I mean by when I'm saying that people are kicking it under the bed. Nice word, put it in the rack, nice word. But they never go back to it. They never stop to implement it. They never do it. And I want you to understand. If you really want to be transformed, if you really want to become that father son, that image that God has, the image of the father son, the, father, the image of, of his likeness and his image, we need to take and make this word part of our lives. It can't be just something that we hear. It can't be just something that is good on the ear. We have to make it part of our lives. Can I start, and I haven't started preaching yet, can I just give you a stern warning word out of the Bible? about the fact that what will happen if you do not reform. Can I? Are you prepared for that? I'm not fighting with you, I just want you to understand how we need to implement the word. Leviticus chapter 26. Go there. The book of Leviticus chapter 26. 
and it's need to be installed. The particular installed particular and it's still is. Yes, sir. So, if you deal with Jacobus 1, verse 21, James 1, 21, what shall say? You will be a geplante word from God. God's word needs to be planted in. God's word must not be heard. Godse woord moet niet gehoord worden. Godse woord moet ingeplant worden. God never sent his word for us to hear. Can I prove that with you? Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55. That's a part of the message, but let me just quickly prove that. Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah 55 from verse 8. Verse 10. Verse 10. For as the rain and snow came down from the heavens and returned not there, but watered the earth and bring it forth and sprout, sprout out that it may give seed to the sour and bread, uh, sour and bread to the eat of sour. Sour. We are seeing the sire. Isaiah 15, verse 10. So shall my that goes out of mine how will it be? It will come down and it needs to go into the earth. This was not water to Water, say for us, in the grot and then the fruit of the saw, and then it brings up things. That's what God says. My word must not be listened to. My word must be planted in. Needs to go deep. Into it. And I mean, if you think about the, 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 the parable that Jesus talked about, the, the sower, also, then you also find that the Word of God needs to be planted deep. It must be rooted deep enough. You can't just, just throw it on top of a hardened heart or something like that. It needs to be rooted. It needs to be go, go deep in. So, so God is clear in his understanding of what he wants to achieve and understanding of these things that he has given us. He has given us a proceeding word that he wants to be implanted. It needs to be planted in. And how do you get it planted in? Before I continue. How do you get God's word to be planted in your life? By meditating on it. Not by just reading it. Not just by listening to it. But allowing it to fill your mind. Allowing it to fill your life. Allowing it to become part of who you are. That's why please don't try to read the Bible in one year. You will miss most of the things that God wants to say to you. Man, if you, if you just read one chapter the whole year, you will learn more out of that one chapter than what you've learned over the whole Bible that you've read in one year. Because you have decided to let it be planted in. It must be installed. It must be installed. My ignorance is not come up yet. All this is cats. Cats, but they don't cats in grassroots. You don't even have to mow it. You just place it. There it is. And now we have all of these daily devotions. Ah, this is a of a daily devotion to it. Why? Because then I don't have to read the Bible. Someone else is reading it for me. That's why I don't like daily devotions. When we were moving now, I have found a stack of daily devotions that I said, well, let's give it to the church, let's give it to the church, but I don't want it. <laughs> I don't need daily devotion. 
It's your mind that will use doubt to steal God's perceiving word. Just like Eve in the garden. The one thing that made Eve to change was her mind. And from that day on, women always changes their minds. <laughs> they can't keep one mind. They must change it all the time. Because they have a saying, what is, what's the good of having a mind if you can't change it? So they change it. And Eve had received the proceeding word from God. Eve knew she was made in the image, but the devil comes and he tells her, in her mind, you are not like him. And then her mind starts to uh, spin. And the moment that her mind starts to, to doubt the proceeding word that God has given her, she starts to doubt God. And sin came into the world. Alright. So that's not my message. That's just an introduction. So now my question is, are you now ready? Are you now prepared to go a little bit deeper? And learn how to rule your mind. That it can become the mind of are you ready for that? Amen. Sure? Yeah. Sure? Yes, then go to Ephesians 1 verse 17. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17. God has said, listen, I want to say it again. We heard it tonight that God will not tell us that we need to reform if He does not give us the means. So here are the means how to reform. Ephesians 1 verse 17. Just going to start with verse 17 first. Now listen to what verse 17 will say. As if all, and I'm reading out of the Amplified Bible. For I always pray to you, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that He may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, of insight and the mysteries and secrets in the deep and intimate knowledge of Him. So there are three important things that I want you to take note of in that verse. Three important things. The first thing is, it says that God grants us something. The, 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 the King James will say, He gives you, that He may give unto you. There's something that God wants to give us. It's not something that comes automatically. It's not something that, it's not a gift that we receive the moment that we receive Jesus Christ as our Savior. When we, when we receive Jesus, we receive the free gift of righteousness. The Bible says, was it gratis geschenk van genade ontvang. It's not that. So there's something that God wants to give you. Something that He wants to give you. And the question is what? That's the second point. He wants to give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. We finish the love of How many of you would like to have a spirit of wisdom and revelation, understanding the word of God and the family God? Amen. Amen. Two or three or four or five, six, seven, bow right, like it seems like God's Do you know that you can have it? Amen. Because God's going to give it. Come on. God says, Paul says, I'm praying for you that God will give to you. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation, and listen, and, and, and that's why I like what Amplified said, of insight into the mysteries and secrets, and the deep and intimate, that's the third thing, third thing knowledge of Him. Ah. How many, again, let me ask you the question, same question, hopefully I give the same answer. How many would like to have more intimate, deep knowledge in Him or yes. of Him. Yes. Is it possible? No. Yes, because God can give it to you. The Bible says God can give you a spirit of 
wisdom and knowledge in the knowledge of him as a person. Understanding him as a person. Now the next question is how? How is God going to give that to you? That's where Ephesians 1 verse 8 comes in. Now listen. This tells you how is God going to give you that spirit. By having the eyes of your heart flooded with light. Yeah. We spoke about this last Sunday a little bit. By having the eyes of your heart flooded with light. So that you can know and understand the hope to which He has called you. And how rich is His glorious inheritance in the saints. We just said earlier in this service that your inheritance is no weapon formed against you shall prosper. But how many of us really understand that? How many of us really love it? How many of us can really, really uh, practice that and put that into day to day practice but God says if you allow me or if you flat your eyes with my light then I will give you the wisdom I will give you the revelation knowledge so that you will understand what I have placed inside of you so that you will understand what is in you it's because if you understand me you will understand what is in you and then you will know what is the riches of your inheritance that I already have given you the two important things, the spirit of wisdom and revelation comes when you have your eyes flooded with light. Our heart must be flooded with light. And then I want you to take note because this in thee and only then will you understand how rich is his glorious inheritance in you. So the moment, listen to this statement, the moment the eyes of your hearts are flooded with light, then we will become to understand what the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness yes, of power is that is in us and towards us. Amen. Amen. We do not yet understand the power that God has placed in us. Why? Because we do not allow the eyes of our heart to be flooded with light. Yes. And because we don't flood our eyes with light, we don't understand the power that we have. Yes. We don't understand what God has placed in us. We don't understand what the Word can do to us and for us and in us. Yes, no. So my moment of the same, a back to taken from your eyes of your heart. Oh, we come to that now. Yeah. <laughs> we come to that. We come to that. We come to that. So you see, you cannot come to a place of inheritance. You cannot, I want you to hear me, you cannot come to a place of inheritance. So you cannot come to a place where no weapon formed against you will not prosper. You cannot come there. If the eyes of your heart, which actually means your understanding of God, understanding of the Word, has not been enlightened. Flooded with light. You will never know what is the hope that He has for you. And you will never know what is the inheritance that is in you. Unless we allow our eyes to be flooded. Now, I know the Afrikaans translation says the lifted word van die verstaan. So let's start talking about that. See, light brings understanding. Light brings understanding. And this wisdom will come when your heart is in the correct condition because you've come to a place of understanding because of the proceeding word of God. Now come your answer. Because of the proceeding word of God 
that has flooded your heart with its love. So let's look at a few scriptures to understand what God wants to say to us. Psalm 36 verse 9. Psalm 36 verse 9. Just let's look at a few scriptures. Psalm 36 verse 9. But I think you already know what this light is. Has anybody idea what this light is? Alright. So Psalm 36 verse 9, an amplified Bible would just say, For with you is the fountain of life. In your light do we see light. Alright? In your light do we see light. Proverbs 4 verse 18. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 18. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 18. Will say. But the path of the uncompromising just and righteous is like the light of dawn. That shines more and more brighter and clearer. Until it reaches its full strength and glory in the perfect day. To be prepared. The modern King James just say the path of the just is as a shining light that shines more and more to the perfect day. I'm just going to read a few scriptures, then I'm going to talk to you about it. Next, Psalm 18, verse 28. Psalm 18, verse 28. Psalm 18, verse 28. Says the following. Psalms 28, Psalms 18, verse 28 said, For you cause my lamp to be lighted and to shine. The Lord my God illuminates my darkness. Again, Monarchy Job said, For you light my candle. Jehovah my God will make my darkness light. So just before we continue to the next scripture so that you can understand. Let me just say this, when we talk about darkness, we must remember that in Isaiah 62, um, it will say, Arise, shine for your, 62, yeah, Arise, shine for your light has come. And then verse 2 will say that in this world there will be darkness, and over people there will be dense darkness. So there are two types of darkness. The first darkness is the darkness of sin. What is the other darkness? But what about my mind? Ignorance. Being totally ignorant of who God is, what God can do. My people perish because of lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge is ignorance. And then the Bible described, as I 62 62.2, described that darkness as a Things darkness. Ignorance of who God is is the biggest darkness in this world. And that's why we have read up to now that, 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 that God said, or that the word said, that God will light my candle to take away that light darkness, to take away my ignorance. Alright? So how will he do that? By the preceding word of God. Mm -hmm. Psalm 119 verse 130. Psalm 119 verse 130. 119 verse 130. Now listen to this word. Then you will really start to see what Paul also means when he said, you, your eyes need to be flooded with light. Listen. It says verse 130 it says the entrance of unfolding and oh, sorry the entrance and unfolding of your words give light. The unfolding gives understanding, discernment and comprehension to the sun. 
King James said, the entrance of thy words give light. It gives understanding. So what are we talking about? We just said now, in Ephesians we just said, that God wants to give us a spirit of wisdom to understand who He is so that we can understand what we have. And He's doing that by flooding our eyes, the eyes of your heart with light. So what is the light that must flood my eyes? The word that proceeds from His mouth. Psalm 119 verse 113. The interest and unfolding of your words give light. Those words give understanding. Those words, those light take away darkness. Those light take away ignorance. When I stop to allow this word of God to be implanted in my life, to be implanted, and I flat my eyes with this word, that's all that my eyes see. That's all that I'm reading. It's all that I'm looking at. I'm receiving the word. I'm receiving God's word. I'm flooding my eyes. And as I flat my eyes, I receive understanding. And in all the darkness, in all the ignorance that I ever had about God, just disappear. Because Psalm 190 verse 105, we all know, will say that your word is a and a, a lamp unto my foot, foot and a light. So what is the light that I need to be filled my eyes with? God's word. Ask your question. God's word. God's word. God's word. Listen to Proverbs 6 verse ah, Proverbs 6 verse 23 Proverbs chapter 6 verse 23 Proverbs 6 verse 23 will say So for the commandment is a lamb. And the whole teaching of the law is light. And reproofs of discipline are the way of life. For the rule is light. For the word is light. The teaching of this word is a shining light. So it is the proceeding word of God that brings light. So wisdom and understanding is the light that it will bring. And in this season that we are walking, we need to take care of how we walk. Because we need to walk according to His light. We need to walk according to His proceeding word. Because it is the word that will flat my eyes with light. And the moment my eyes are flattered with light, I will have and the spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of wisdom and revelation, and suddenly I will start to know who God is, and then suddenly I will start to know who I am in God. And I will know the inheritance that is implanted in me. So we need to make sure that we receive God's word. Now I've talked about this scripture also last week, but I need to talk about it again. My last scripture for tonight. Job 29 verse 3. Job 29, just to bring this home, just to bring this home. Job 29 verse 3. Bible basically was 
Moses. Put it like this. By his light, or when his light was shining over my head, and when I went through the dark, by his light. You see, I've mentioned this morning, Acts 27, where Paul was on the ship in this traumatic storm. And they were all about to lose their life. I don't think there's more darkness than that. Come on. We find all of us are going to in the storm. Alright? So, most of the time, you will not have a dry pair of clothes when you finish with that. Because even the ones in your suitcase, you would put on and have to take off and put on and have to take off. Because of all the water that's coming over you, don't think otherwise. Just think about Paul in this situation where it is dark, literally also. You can hear how this ship is starting to break. How the mast is falling off, there's no sails anymore, there's no steering anymore. You can hear the screams and the panic of the passengers. And Paul, he had a light that shined upon his head. Why? Because he had a proceeding word from God saying everything will be fine, everything will be built. And he walked through that darkness with the light of God that shines upon his. So that's significant. The job said that his light shines over my head. Because where is my thoughts? In my head. So where does the light shine? In my head. And if his light starts to shine, his word starts to shine in my head. No darkness can take hold of me. I will always walk through any darkness. I want to tell you, he doesn't say that that darkness starts to enfold me. He never said that darkness become part of his life. He never said that that darkness shook him. He never said anything. All that he said, I walk through it. I walk through it. Why? Because I had my eyes flooded with his light. And suddenly I had understanding. And I had wisdom. And I had understanding of who he is. And I understand who I am. And I can walk with his light through any dark Amen. So the way that I rule and have dominion over my mind is to flood it with His Word. Not to give it some of God's Word. We know what's a flood. A fruit. A fruit. A flood is not something small. A flood takes everything else away. And I need to make sure that I flat my mind so with His thoughts, with, with His word, with His light. That everything that was in my life and in my thought processes are washed away. And the only thing that I can see, the only thing that I can talk, the only thing that I can walk is His light. Because my eyes are flattered with His light. His light is shining upon my head. And by his light, I walk through darkness. We all know that Job at that stage, he was sitting in big, big, big darkness. But he remembered what he used to do when he was sitting in darkness. And he forgot about it while he was sitting there and, and contemplating his life. And, and actually proclaiming his innocence in front of God. Until God steps in and God talks to him. And God says, let me enlighten you again. Let me give you my word. Then suddenly, Job 
whole attitude changed in John 20, 42 and he said that I have heard from you but now I have met you face to face and everything that I said to you I retract because it was not the truth but now I have understanding. I was in the darkness but you have flooded my eyes with your light. Now I have the spirit of wisdom and understanding and I walk through this darkness and I come out on the other side twice better than I was. Amen. And what I have lost. So I just want to say that again. You will never experience true dominion until you can rule your mind with His love. That's when you are going to experience it. That's when it's going to happen. That when you walk up to a person, that the sick will be healed. You don't even have to talk to them. It will just happen. That's when the death wall will be rise. That's when, when, when uh, creative miracles will take place. When you are in the presence. Why? Because this light is shining upon you. And you understand the inheritance that is in you. You know that there's nothing in this world that can stop you. For fulfilling God's purpose, not yours. So now my question then is, how flat is your eyes? Or with what is your eyes flat? Huh? That's the enough Because I'm sitting more in front of the television than in front of God's Word. I'm sitting more in front of my PlayStation trying to kill demons and all that all all I hope I is and was all around the most I try to kill and not to be killed. And I said blue cut spot and those whoo and I just a gang. But what are you flanning your eyes with? I clears the high school of the in Bible. I'm reading Facebook more than I'm more on Facebook than on the Bible on my phone. Come on. Me and all fit was altered on Alice from Abou. Why? You have it on Facebook gelees. So, with what are you flagging your arms? Is that the reason why you still sit in darkness? Because His light is not shining upon your head. Because your mind is not flooded with His will. Just asking a question. I'm not fighting. I'm just asking a question. We want to have the mind of Christ. We want to be reformed. We want to think like God. We want to work like God. We want to, we want to do the things that God wants us to do. But we will never come to that if we do not have the spirit of wisdom and revelation to understand who He is. And the only thing that we only way that we can get the spirit of wisdom and revelation is by our the eyes of our heart being flattened, flattened, flattened with His light, which is His word. Which is His word. H. So again, what do you flat your eyes? You see, most of the people sometimes, luckily they're not here tonight, hopefully, they flat their eyes with the politics of this world. My other bit, Alice. And they lead us not to go around. And they will look at every news bulletin. And they, they, will just, they just want to know what's happening. They complain. And they... Why? Because that's what they... Eyes of flooded. Can I come on for a few minutes? Or is it tevreden? Let's stand before God. Can I say again, how many of you would like to have true dominion? How many of you would like to have the wisdom of spirit and, and, and revelation? Just two of you, so I can minister. 
Thank God for two. Now, how many of you are prepared to say, Father, I will flap my eyes with your light. Let your light shine upon my head. Let your light shine upon my head. Yes, Let your light. Because it's by this light that I will walk through. I will not stand still. I will not camp. I will walk through darkness. Your light. Your light. So as we close our eyes, first of all, we need to repeat in tonight. Say, God, we have flattered our eyes with the wrong things. We have flattened our eyes with our circumstances. We have flattened our eyes with the things around us that is negative. We have flattened our eyes with everything that is wrong. Everything that went wrong. We have flattened our eyes with so many things. We've never allowed your light to flat our eyes. So now we're struggling with your word. We're struggling with what you're telling because we do not have a spirit of wisdom and revelation. But Father, tonight is the night that we say, help us, we make a statement, we make a commitment. We will start to flatten our eyes with your light, with your word, with your word, with your words. So we can have your spirit of wisdom and understanding so that we can understand you, Peter, and understand the inheritance that you've placed in us, that which you have imparted in us, so that we can understand the, the, the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of power that you placed on the inside of us, so that we can walk in your light through darkness. Father, we will flat our eyes with your light. So we ask you, Jesus, that as we start to do that, that your light will shine upon our heads. So I trust that everyone here that's standing here now, Father, is saying that also to you. Father, let your light start to shine upon my head. As I flat the eyes of my heart with your light, let it start to shine on my head. Yes, amen. So that I may walk through darkness. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus. I just want you to do it by yourself right now. I just want you to talk to God yourself right now. Telling you that you will start to flap your eyes with this word. Maybe you don't know it now yet, but you will help you. The Spirit will lead you. I want to flap my eyes with your word. Here I my own, and a full word, and my evil your light may shine upon our hands. No ignorance can disappear and all understanding appear. I hope you heard that all. That all ignorance can disappear and all understanding appear. So that we can come to know you. To know you. To know you. To know you. So that we can come to know you. So that we can come to know you. So that we can come to know you. Have your knowledge. Have your mind. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Jesus.
Jesus. God is doing it right now for you. God is doing it right now for you. If you are willing, God is doing it right now for you. He's changing you from the inside. He's going to let His light flood your eyes. The more that you will spend time in His work, the more His light will shine upon you. The more he will give you understanding in his word, wisdom of his word, but you have to spend time in his word.